Outlaw, Macho, drive in. We have the a second battle royal on this show, so this one's won by Viscera, eliminating Snitsky. Then we get to the main show. Um, I really enjoyed this show, by the way. Um, Big Show and Kane defeated Carlito and Chris Masters. I loved the pairing of Masters and Carlito because they were one of those teams that necessarily weren't a tag team, but they were just two single guys that always had each other's back. Um, so it made sense for them to go for the tag titles. Um, second Money in the Bank ladder match, we have Rob Van Dam defeating the current WWE champion, Bobby Lashley, the father of current Impact Tag Team champion, Finley, Matt Hardy, Ric Flair, and current Tag Team champion, Shelton Benjamin. Um... JBL defeated Chris Benoit uh, for the United States Championship. Edge defeated Mick Foley in a hardcore match, which is probably my favorite match of this night, I would say. Um, Boogeyman defeated Booker T and Charmel. Um, Mickey James defeated Trish Stratus. This one here, I technically think should have gone a little bit longer because both of these girls could go. Um, they were both ahead of their time, um, which Ruthless Aggression did have a lot of really talented females. Um, they just, you know, think at the time that they got nowadays. Um, Undertaker defeated Mark Henry in a casket match. Shawn Michaels defeated Vince McMahon. Um, which is actually a pretty fun match. Um, Rey Mysterio defeated Randy Orton, Kurt Angle, in a triple threat for James. What title is it? WCW World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> there we go. Um, <laughs> Tori Wilson defeated <clears throat> Candice Michelle in a Playboy pillow fight match. Yeah. Um, After he gave it five stars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I think plenty of people in the hand of America gave it five fingers, but you know. <laughs> I get five fingers. Um, then we have <laughs> 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 that's where right, we're going. Um, <laughs> then we have John Cena defeating Triple H uh, to retain the WWE Championship, which also has a certain cameo. Early in the entrance of a one CM Punk, um, King of the Indies. <laughs> Keith, what did you think of WrestleMania 22, which is the final non-stadium WrestleMania? Oh, I didn't know that. Um, Ancient I didn't see this one live. This this was like my period where I didn't really watch much wrestling. I'd keep up with it, um, but I didn't watch it religiously like I do now. Um, honestly, this one, I don't remember this mania. There's a couple of bits, but that I'm like, oh yeah, that happened, that happened. But um, on the the whole show as a well, whole, I don't remember it. Um, I remember the Edge Mick Foley, you know, speeding through the flaming table. Um, see, Undertaker, Mark Henry in a casket match, that, that could slip, easily slip anyone's mind. Um, like looking back at this, I was like, oh shit, that actually happened, didn't it? That wasn't a dream or anything. <laughs> um, John Cena, Triple H, vaguely remember that. But on a whole, I, I, I could forget this when WrestleMania ever happened, personally. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Tell me how you really feel, Pete. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to be honest, are you? Uh, you okay there, Joe? Yeah. You, uh, it looks like someone's trying to break into your room or something. What's going on there? Yeah. My Wonder Man. Yeah, you keep looking. But, uh, yes. You looking at the door. What's... Oh, I was I was I was looking at my leg. It looked like it was curved, funky. So I was just staring at it, and moving it around. <laughs> yep, yep. You asked the own question there. <laughs> so um, yeah. oh my god, that's that's my two yeah. cents, Sonny. Yeah. How about you, James? Okay. What are you saying? All right. This is my first and. First ever going to a WrestleMania. Uh, I have not even watched the pay per view. Uh, that's the rule. If I go to a live show, I don't go watch it later or anything like that. It just, I just don't do that. Um, before I start that, that was a very weekend. That was a big weekend of first. Try to go to the press conference. A lot of people was there. Couldn't get in. I heard it. 
because uh, it was just like two blocks from where my uh, it was like a couple. It was downtown. It was a couple of blocks away. A lot of people. That's when I noticed. And I'm sorry for anyone that feel offended. Praise fans. I met this one woman who had a three bean binder of everybody appearances in the state of Illinois that was WWE. And I'm like, are you crazy? She like they show up at this time and this. She's all organized. I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> it, was, it was probably someone who Brandon Dime knows because he, he, he knows plenty of those people that, that does that thing. Yeah, I'm just like, it, 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 they are. They are, they are crazy. Yeah, and she was nice and everything, but it was like a, a binder and everything and stuff like that. Like, okay, Dude, it's kind of creepy in a way because I'll I'll see people who um they'll get like. I'll, I'll just be like standing around, like say eating a sandwich or something, and I'll hear like a couple of wrestling fans next to me, and they'll get a text message saying that they're headed to such and such hotel or restaurant or airport because they just got a text message saying that such and such is going to be at this place at this time, and it's like mm. stop being a fucking stalker. It's like you're exactly you're, you're there to enjoy the time. It's, it's kind of weird how Joe, there's like a remember? whole network dedicated to this thing. Where yeah. you know, text each other, mm-hmm. crash each other, tell each other what that is. Someone... It's really sad. Yeah. Joe, do you remember when we was in the mm-hmm. casino and we saw AJ Styles playing? Um, yeah. Like but you know, yeah. we respect them. We did as much as I would love to have gone up to him for a photo. You know, you just respect their privacy, don't you? You know, they're still yeah, human exactly. beings at the end of the day. Yeah. But yeah. people like that with binders and shit—that's fucked. I don't agree with that at all. That's yeah. Fucked. Yeah, that was just. Yeah. Just leave them be, man. Uh, you want to meet them? Yeah, so they didn't pay like the rest of us. Go to access. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, this is when you get out of character. It was also my first time ever going to a Ring of Honor event. And they had a two night show. And I have to talk about it just a little bit because it was Super Card of Honor both? in Chicago Ridge, Illinois. What was that? Did you go to both or both nights? Did you go to both nights? I, I went to. That's what I'm looking for. I got the card up here, and it's like I remember certain things, and I remember everything. I think I only went to night one. That's what I think I didn't miss. I missed Friday, and I think I went to Saturday because I remember certain things on this one where uh, Jim Cornette was still with Ring of Honor, so I did see Jim Cornette. I didn't meet him, but he was doing fan signs, and I was behind him in the bleachers and stuff, and saw Jack Evans defeat Eddie Steele, Matt Seidel with Jimmy Jacobs with. Uh, Jake and David Christ. Uh, saw Delirious versus Ricky Reyes with Julio Smokes. With Julius Smokes. Oh, sorry. And then Rave and Shelly and Masato Yanto defeat Dragon Kid. And uh, basically, Dragon Gate was here. That was the win thing I wanted to go. But check out this match, Joe. Four Corner Survival. Joe defeated AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, and Jimmy Yang. <laughs> and stuff like that. And. Aries and Strong versus the Blood Generation at SEMA and Naki Doi. And then there was the main event. I popped for this one all the way. I thought it was the main event because the actual main event was Cole Cavana versus Homicide in the Chicago Street Fight. But uh, American Dragon Daniel Bryanson, whoever that is, defeated Lance Storm <laughs> by submission to the Aries title because I think Lance Storm came out of retirement for this match and it was uh, awesome. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my Saturday. And then Sunday. Good time. So it was my friend and his girlfriend. We went to Allstate Arena. Uh, we're like, yeah, it won't be that bad. They did have a little access, little thing there where you can, I think, Hillbilly Gym. You can play SmackDown, the video game on PlayStation 2 at the time. Uh, while we was in line, we saw Vince and Linda uh, arrived at the building and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. Like, oh, I saw Vince McMahon. And it was it was fine. It just it was because you know this is the last arena thing, so it wasn't really a big major thing. I think only wrestling thing was Ring of Honor, but it wasn't like it is now. So we just waited in line. We got in. It was interesting. We had like in the side where they were coming out. So the ring was probably like right here, but we can see people coming in and out the entrance ramps. And it was great to have my uh, poster board saying "Return of the King." Triple H mark and stuff. Friend looked at me like I was shaking my feet. Like what? It's Triple H. <laughs> okay. 
And but for the actual match, it is kind of weird though, because when I'm looking at it, like I remember things, but then I don't remember everything and stuff like that. Like Big Show and Kane versus Carlito and Chris Masters. See, it's just like that happened. It's weird because I guess you watch too many wrestling matches, everything just blend together. But I remember yeah. Undertaker and Mark Henry. I remember Mickey James and Trish Stratus. I remember the uh, Money in the Bank because I already won that. I remember Ray Orton and Angle because Ray came out in the entrance and it was all for Eddie and I'm like, oh god. And of course, I remember John Cena Triple H entrance and didn't notice who was CM Punk because I didn't know who he was. But give me one second. Hold on. Give me one second. Okay. And- Silence. Is he? Uh, Silence. I, yeah, I think there's gonna be. No, my wife was talking talk to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> nah, give me one second. <laughs> Is he doing some like some dumb AEW thing where he's gonna turn on the lights and it's gonna be FTR in the ring? Uh, that's not- <laughs> he's going to get the spark. Oh, that's right. Let's go. I was thinking about that. Like- no, my wife. <laughs> my wife was talking to me. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think there's gonna be a misunderstanding. Okay. So there he is. You know, I was recording. She didn't want to walk in and stuff. She didn't want to Scott Hall into frame. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, because this is such so, a professional but, uh, setup that we have here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. And then I don't remember no no actual Playboy pillow fight match to tell you the truth. I probably went to use the bathroom. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> so, of course you did. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember leaving there because Triple H lost <laughs> by submission to John Cena. And I was like, man, F this pay per view. But it was a good time. It was great. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't get in much detail about it. But it was a good weekend, a good experience for wrestling and stuff like that. So. I will pass it on to Master Heater, and he'll give us a very good 30-minute play-by-play of Undertaker versus Mark Henry in a cast match. <laughs> no, I'm actually more interested in that. I'm, more, I'm actually more interested in your opinions. So, like, based on that... Speechless. Man, speech. He's getting his notes together. Every like, time you mentioned Taika. You know, you know, this always happens when you pass right. it on to me. I, I, I get a feeling that you're doing something. I think he's going to go get the elite figures and reenact it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in trouble. Hello. There you go. Yeah, you're, you're back now. Yeah, this yeah. happens. I think this happens every time James passes on the mic. Yeah, I got, next time, can we go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next time, I'll just jump in. Well, the, um, what? Well, I wanted James here because I was going to ask him a few questions. So. Yeah, I'm here. I think he's actually still hearing me. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I'm just, I got my breath because I'm going to be rude and eat in front of y'all. But go ahead. I'm here. That's it. So, first WrestleMania experience. So, first WrestleMania experience. Uh, would you say, like, was this the first? You didn't travel for this one. You were already in Chicago, right? Yes. Was this your first ever wrestling experience or was this. No, no, I've been to, uh, before that, this was my first WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. I've been to a WWE pay-per-view, and I've been to a Raw. Yeah. Before that. Yes. Yeah, so, did this, uh, did you, uh, after seeing this, did you at all consider that you might go to another one? Yes. You know, minus travel expenses, yes. Yeah. That was only my main thing because, like, I like I would love to go to that WrestleMania, but just you know, traveling and yeah. flying and the hotel and all the stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> I just graduated from college, not master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, uh, yeah, well, but, uh, hopefully, we'll, hopefully, we'll be uh, we'll be together at your second one. Yes, I, I admit that compared to what it is now. It wasn't really anything special. Like I said, you just, you would be hanging out in the All Star Arena. You just go to the little tent thing they had, and like I said, they had people there to sign and take pictures. No one really spectacular. They had things you can buy and do things, but that's about it. That's all they really had. Stuff like that. Yeah. So, but still, you know, at it was a good experience. It's WrestleMania, yeah. Chicago, like Chicago's one yeah. of the you know most passionate fans. The fans made it. Yeah. Great. Let's say with that, like that. Yeah. 
And I did play SmackDown. Little kid almost beat me, but I won. <laughs> <laughs> good, on, good on you. Yeah. So that's what that, uh, for those keeping store, uh, score. The Outlaw Macho Driving is undefeated on SmackDown at WrestleMania Access. <laughs> well, you. I'm sorry. You you broke yeah, you break it up a bit. Yeah. It's mobile. <laughs> it was, uh, oh boy. You might you have to repeat uh, that. You you was breaking up. Uh, yeah. it, it was a bad joke. Anyway. Yeah. It's a good thing that it broke up. Let's just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Let me say this, Master Heater. Yes. It's funny because it felt like you was talking another lane because it was like young young on young dong ding on young. Oh so you heard that. This was... No. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, well, the the curse the curse does not work if you hear it. Ah oh, man, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Hashtag for the demo. <laughs> um. Okay, so WrestleMania 22. Uh, I'll be honest here. Like, I felt like you know. WrestleMania 20, WrestleMania 21, we were riding a high, and WrestleMania 22, you know, sort of stayed the course and it didn't go down a bit. It didn't entice me like the other ones. I didn't leave it feeling, you know, as if I should sell the show of shows. They're not saying it's a bad card by any means, but that's... Uh, We've seen back then. Yeah. Uh, we'll say I think my favorite match might be on this card. Uh, on this card might be Mickey James versus Trish uh, Stratus. It's, it's. I think it's the best story being told on that uh, on that on that show altogether. It's also, mind you, I like their match at New Year's Revolution more even. Like I thought, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah, I, yeah. Thought, I thought I thought uh, I thought New Year's Revolution had like you know a lot a lot more nuances to it where they were teasing you know Mickey James just you know going off the rails and everything and this I think one was, him again. Yeah, it had a lot. He's he's flashing us. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> it had a lot of nuances. That's what I'm. I agree. <laughs> off with. <laughs> And it sure did. I'm not saying anything, dude. <laughs> hey, hello. <laughs> and uh, that's what you get for talking about Marky Ito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? You can just fill the song with, you... with her singing if you if that's uh, what you guys are. <laughs> You know, Mohammed, you bring up bringing up curses and everything. How do you know when she's singing that she's not singing a curse and she's trying to curse anyone that's going to badmouth her on the interwebs? So right now, you're being cursed because of your hatred towards her and her future tag team of Riho Ito. So her curse is basically cutting off my sound in and out. Mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. God, even her curse, uh, even her curse is so. You, 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 you make fun of her mic skills. She's gonna, she's gonna curse your mic skills. <laughs> and I, I can't even see you. See, that's how bad it is. See, I'm a fan, so I can't even see your face. So yeah, see, oh, yeah. See, see, it's a good curse because she just fucked up her own curse by turning. If you can't see him, that means he's like John Cena, which means that she just britted her own curse. Yeah, I guess that tracks. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Well, Rio and Marco will be going for the NXT Tag Team Women's Belts at Mania. Watch. <laughs> Let them show up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the only way to master heat of a uh, cheer on Blackheart. You're like, go, Blackheart, go. <laughs> 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 like, if you guys, you guys, you guys, if you guys keep going down this rabbit hole, I'm gonna start my rant on why I don't like them, and it's gonna be like, how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I continue, Matthew. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Anyway, um, yeah, like, even Undertaker versus Mark Henry, like, it's a cool match and all, but it's not even their best match together. I think. It's mm -hmm. 
it's again like I uh, casket matches have the problem of that there is no suspense of like this could suddenly end at any point like you have to know that they have to open the casket and then push whatever you know the loser into it and you know kind of drag it even though the theatrics are cool and everything but you know the suspense is kind of lowered cut down a little bit that's I like Shawn versus McMahon though like Shawn Michaels versus McMahon was mm -hmm. Shawn Michaels versus McMahon like this is again like uh, what I love like Shawn Michaels ring style evolved into like this very great epic storytelling type like you know once he came back from his injury like at the WrestleMania 19 and so forth uh, like that last shot of where he you know stands big man up and he tells him I want to see you uh, I want you to see me kick your teeth down your throat and just backs off you know warms up the band and just blasts him away that was good the I actually forgot that match even existed until I read this card, honestly. Yeah. I was like, that really happened? What? <laughs> yeah. Honestly. I mean, like, I mean, like I, if of all the matches they had on that feud, I think that's the one you want to remember because everything that came after was complete oh. trash. <laughs> Enjoy your breakfast. <laughs> yes, and please pass the breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now James is cutting off for me. <laughs> what is happening here? Pressing up the game. Yeah, I think I think a, another certain you know wrestling show is trying to sabotage us. That's what's happening here. I'm gonna get ah, to the bottom. I'm gonna get. No teeth. I'm gonna get to the bottom of it. I'm not, I won't say who because I don't want people to think that this is actually uh, an actual real rivalry, but. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but uh, this WrestleMania has the distinction of having one of my <coughs> least favorite WrestleMania matches of all time. Like, one of my big all-time stinkers, and that's... Can you guess what it is, James? Boogeyman in Booker T. Thank you, sir. Gold star for you. Or gold worm. I don't know, whatever applies. <laughs> Look at how I... <laughs> okay. Slammy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah slammy for you. Yeah, I hated that mm -hmm. match so much. I hated, like I hated, I hated that match. I hated the lead up. I hated everything about it with a vengeance. It's kind of, kind of like stunk up the whole. Let me, let me, let me give you a counterpoint to it. No, I agree with you, but this is about the cast match. Yeah, I think there's. Oh no, no, I agree. Boogeyman thing that that was horrible. But I mean the cast match, mm -hmm. and, and please, I can chime in right quick. I think there's a place for the cast match if there's a heel Undertaker. Or a unstoppable monster heel to face uh, babyface Undertaker because it to me with the warrior that kind of worked because like all oh, the warrior scared and blah 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 uh, Yokozuna and stuff like that you know these big time monsters like if it was and I know this gonna sound weird but if it was a uh, younger Goldberg. Goldberg versus Undertaker, cast and match, I can see that work. Wow, look at Oh, uh, you know, Goldberg they made Undertaker. Goldberg goes. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm scared of the cast. It, that's how it worked. But just with now, it's just I don't see anybody believable enough to like, how are you scared of a cast? <laughs> see what I mean? <laughs> and stuff like that. So It worked with Yokozuna and Kamala and everyone because you could buy that they're superstitious <laughs> and they would... Yeah, see, yeah, see, yeah, you can throw that in there. It so. worked with Shawn Michaels because, you know, Shawn Michaels is much smaller than the Undertaker, and he knows, like, you know, this is his match, so he's going to stuff me in that casket, the whole lock it down, and, like, the Undertaker mm -hmm. hates my guts right now, so I don't want to be in a casket match with him, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mark mm -hmm. Henry, And it, the symbolic, I'm going to bury your career, I'm going to kill your career, Shawn Michaels, like that, like, I'm going to, yeah. Yeah. Mark Henry did not sell the casket until the day of the match. That's the problem. Like he didn't, he wasn't scared of it. Mm -hmm. at all. But then all of a sudden he's walking out and he's like, you know, sort of trepidatious about the casket, which does not track. Look, it's no. Like, I, I saw. I read that he was legit scared of caskets, like being in enclosed spaces. Yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, can you blame him? Like. Uh, no, I wouldn't like to be buried alive. I like at, <laughs> one, axis, a at one axis. I stood in the in st inside one of the Undertaker's caskets they had on display, and I was like yeah. getting chilly in there. It's, it's <laughs> every time I've been in a casket, though, I've enjoyed it. What? <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm not yeah, joking. Yeah. That's just, yeah. they're, they're, I, I, think, I think they're comfortable. <laughs> Well, it depends on the casket. I think the ones like the thicker boat for your Kazuna wouldn't have been comfortable. It's just wood. No, because that's not like all wooden. <laughs> yeah, like you're you're talking about you know one of those you know display caskets that were nice and yeah, they're cushioned. <laughs> yeah, if they had a phone charger, mm-hmm. you'd be all for it. I bet. No, even take, don't even bring a phone in there. Just like close the door and just like be by yourself for a while. They're relaxing. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Me, I'd be claustrophobic. Like, I'd, I'd, like to be, I'd like to be alone and everything, but I would, uh, I'd, like, even if I'm staying here for two hours, I'd be thinking, like, what if I cannot, uh, what if this door doesn't open if I want it to? Oh, two hours is too much. <laughs> Already can picture me. We go to Joe's place to watch pay per view. He's going to pop out the cab and, like, evening, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> like no, he's, he's even gonna do the Dracula thing where he, you know, slowly rises way up to, to this and uh, go like evening. Mm-hmm. Are you looking at your casket? I was trying packet? to see if I had a little Dracula. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to see if I had a little un- Dracula casket somewhere just sitting around. Because <laughs> I do, I, I do have a Dracula casket and I have an Undertaker casket, but you know, action figure ones. Yeah. Well, speaking of which. I got I got this red right handy right here. Nice. And what you talking about, Mass Heater? Okay. I'm feeling. Uh, and let me let me do. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can't see it, but I'm holding up an Undertaker casket right now. So. Okay. Oh, I figured. I figured. I'm just saying. And let me be. Uh, 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 MVS Cafe with all your riches, because you're a prince. You probably have a a, a, a workshop building Undertaker casket. So I can just see you doing the whole Carbet thing and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> apparently, apparently you need a license for that i checked uh, i mean uh, no uh, <laughs> uh, yeah and uh, just to co-sign with james ray mysterious entrance and the story was very good it was awesome like the mm-hmm. whole, you know, the building thing, uh, the whole building stage, like a Chicago Bulls style building stage. I think that's what they're going for. That was a cool entrance, and and, they, and 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 I remember they had the the I don't know if it was the Hall of Fame people that had banners around. So I remember yeah. seeing Eddie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like, like they should they, do that. To me. Yeah, they had everyone on the current roster and Eddie. Like they. Yes. They, yeah. Yeah, and, and speaking of the battle royal, do you guys remember like uh, Road Warrior Animal going in there all healing it up and this stuff? Mm-hmm. Said something like, "I made more money than all of you." Vaguely, he was doing. He wasn't like Road Warrior Animal. who was just Animal. He was out in a leather vest and. Yeah, he had that weird look that he had uh, when he was on a heel on a single star in SmackDown as the Road Warrior. Yeah, was... I know, and oh, and one more, I think. I remember telling a friend when we found out that, well, a month before WrestleMania was coming, that it really didn't feel like WrestleMania because I just realized there was no Batista because he was out injured. Jericho was injured. And a couple other people was missing from that card also. It was still a good card, but just the people I was really looking forward to and stuff like that. Batista was there, but he did a backstage thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Stuff like that, yeah. He said, uh, whoever's going to uh, is holding it for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. That's why, like, yeah, it's a WrestleMania, but man, I really like that. These people have been there and stuff like that. So I'm thinking, like, where was Chris Jericho? He was there, and I'm like, I think he was injured or something like that. He was injured or he just no, he, he was on hiatus. Like, yeah, that's what it was. Because he, 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 he left after SummerSlam 2005, and then he didn't come back until uh, December of 2007. Okay. Okay, that's what it was like. I remember, I know, I remember he wasn't there, but yeah, the teacher was injured, and somebody else, though. But yeah, but it was good to see Shawn Michaels. That was my first and only time seeing Shawn Michaels, and well, Vince McMahon, of course, and uh, and Triple H. I have to check, but that's probably my first time seeing Triple H either. But I probably saw him at a Raw also, and just. Throw in the master heater. That's when I saw American Badass Undertaker. So I saw uh, both Undertakers. I saw the Undertaker and I saw American Badass Undertaker. Why you? 
And I'm about to make you real jealous. He even did a joke with Kane and The Rock. <laughs> After the show went off the air, of course. Do you remember the, you remember the joke? <laughs> of course. What type of pie you like? <laughs> he said, Poon Kane pie. <laughs> Just like that, yes. <laughs> Thank you for joining us in the Outlaw Macho Driving. If you liked that video, please click like and subscribe to our channel for more content from the driving. For full episodes of our podcast, please look us up on Anchor or Spotify. Just search for Outlaw Macho Driving or click the link in the description below. Please uh, feel free to comment. Tell us what you think about our discussion. Please tell us what you think about us. Tell us what you think in general. The world's your oyster. And do us a favor, spread the word, help us out here, share. Thank you, we love you. Bye.